As multiple waves of disruption, from climate change to global pandemics, impact our daily lives, a less visible but as transformative digital revolution is also underway. In this episode of Disrupted, I'm speaking to Jean-Marc Olanier, the Europe CEO of global consultancy firm Accenture, about the challenges and the potential of unlocking sustainable and positive solutions in what are clearly turbulent times. Jean-Marc Olanier, many thanks for joining us on Disrupted. Everything seems pretty bleak right now, doesn't it? But how do you see the future? You know, in my role, it's uh, obviously a role where you look at the, you know, what's going on today, but you also look at what's going on tomorrow. But I think when I look at where we are today versus probably three, six or nine months ago, where we were very, very focused on the crisis, we are still focused on it, but we are looking more and more about what's next. And that's where I get some optimism around the fact that there will be an end to this crisis, like any crisis. And we need to look at what's next and what the new normal will look like. And we start to learn that there is some good things that will come of this crisis. And I think certainly for business leaders like me, I think like for any crisis, there are opportunities that we have to shape, understand and capture. This seems to be quite fueled by your own personal convictions. Do you generally see an opportunity in a crisis? Yes, I think there is two things you know from a crisis. First, there is an end to it, you know, and we should never forget that, especially when we're in the middle of it. But second, every crisis gives you opportunities because a crisis changes things, change market opportunity, change competitive situation, change the behavior of the different stakeholders. And if you understand it right, you shape it right, you position yourself right, you can capture opportunity, and that's very much where we are today. Let's take a big picture view yeah. of this, and if we see the world at a sort of a turning point, yeah. as it is, um, I'm going to put you on the spot here. On a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the optimum, do you think the world is going to go on the right path from now? Yes, I, I really believe, on, without being too naive on optimism, I think we are at crossroads, as you say. I really believe so, that for many reasons I can describe we have to fundamentally reinvent the way we do business in probably the next decade to come. And the reason our climate change, the reason our technology, the reason our the behavior on the consumer expectation, the stakeholder expectation, we really need to redesign the way we do business to become, in a simple way, more digital for sure, but also more sustainable in order to deal for one of the biggest challenges the planet has to face, which is climate change. So back to my question, on a scale of one to 10, do you think the world is gonna move in that direction? Yes, I, where, I'm, where clearly, I'm clearly on the eight, nine to 10 type of zone, you know. I clearly believe that uh, the stars are more and more aligned that we have to change. The geopolitics is better aligned than ever with the Biden administration coming back to uh, COP21, employees and citizens are expecting a change. And frankly, the business leaders, as well as government, are very aligned to say that the way we do business today, the current linear economic model we are currently knowing is not going to be sustainable. And we have to change it. How would you define twin transformation, something that Accenture has defined as a future path forward for the world? Yes, twin transformation is a bit of a brand name we use in order to uh, explain to the community, to the business environment, what are the ingredients required to be successful in this new world. The companies that will master digital technology and the companies that will put sustainability at the heart of their strategy will probably be the winners in this future world. So having a perfect understanding of those two trend on those two technologies is going to be critical. And then where does Europe stand in terms of this kind of deep global transformation? Because Europe, in terms of sustainability, is a leader. In terms of innovation, it tends to struggle more. I think when I look at it, frankly, Europe has been, when you look at the previous wave of change, which was very digital driven, tech driven, there was a view that Europe was a bit behind. Europe invests a bit less. Uh, we're a bit behind on the adoption of new, new technology. And that's, in certain way, we see with COVID, 
a, a willingness from Europe to catch up. But there was a kind of little delay compared, especially to China, frankly, more than North America, but also compared to North America. When you look at the second wave of change, which is more sustainable, here Europe is probably a bit ahead. Uh, and that's probably one of the benefits from, uh, from the European company in terms of awareness, first of all, but also in terms of you know, the way they adopt carbon pricing, the way they adopt more sustainable product and services. And that's probably an advantage that the European company should keep leveraging. Because today, you know, in the global competition scheme, you need both to be successful. So you have to catch up where you are a bit behind and you have to leverage where you are strong. And I think that's very much what we have to see uh, in the European landscape. And Jean, this is in many respects in the theoretical landscape. Yes. Now, for example, when I came in here, I was chatting to my taxi driver yeah. uh, and he was desperate. He was saying the situation is so hard. He's concerned about his family, how he's going to feed them. So how do you get people to look to the long term, this long term you're talking yeah, about, it, when the short term is so unpredictable? You know, it has been first a, a huge exercise of humility because you are dealing, as you say, with something we don't know and which, trickle, which creates a lot of uncertainty. And I call it a bit one foot in today, one foot in tomorrow. So you have to be pretty humble on the one foot in today because the situation is not easy. The pandemic situation is not fully resolved. There is a lot of uncertainty. So in the foot of today, you have to listen, first of all, to your, what's going on around you and try to have some empathy with it because people, you're right, are dealing with tough situations. But just listening and explaining what's going on is not enough. You need to have a vision and you need to get the people with you because, as I say, we need to say there will be an end to this crisis and there will be opportunity at the end of this crisis and you need to set a direction as well. You know, empathy is good, but you need to have a vision on a direction to set because there is hope out there. And that's where I'm dealing with more the foot into the tomorrow's place is my job, uh, like many of the leaders, is to understand this new market, this new opportunity, to shape for it, to get prepared for it, and to explain to your team that there are some goodness out there. And yes, we need to continue to deal with the current situation, but we need to start preparing ourselves to that future world. If we look at figures from the World Bank, for example, you know, they show millions of people are going to be plunged into poverty because of the COVID-19 crisis. And so if we look at this vision, at this hope you're talking about, when will they actually feel the trickle-down change in their lives that will bring them out of this poverty, out of this recession? No, you're right. I think when you look at it from a macroeconomic standpoint, you know, globalization on business development has allowed many countries to get away from poverty, you know, at quite of a big scale. You know, when you look at the world in the 19th century, in the early of the 20th century, today, you know, it's not perfect by far, but, but at the end of the day, our job is to ensure more people around the planet participate to the global economy. And I do see with a more sustainable world as well as a more digital economy, this will give opportunity for more people around there. Many of the emerging economy have already emerged and they will benefit from what we see tomorrow. But some economy and some countries will have to emerge and the, the job is not finished, I will say, in terms of bringing everybody to the global economy. And I think what I can see, which maybe could be unique this time with climate change on the concept of a different type of economy, everybody will have to participate because we have to change as a planet, not as a single economy or a single country. Everybody will have to contribute to that agenda because maybe for, it's not something that happens very often. All of us live in the same planet. We have only one planet and we need to take care of it. As we look at this future th that you can probably see more clearly than many others, in terms of this future, artif artificial intelligence is going to play a key role. But many people fear artificial intelligence. They fear that relationship between man and machine. Is that fear grounded? We call it probably with a wrong word. Artificial intelligence looks like something in competition with men. We're going to have to rethink the way we split the work between the men and the machine because the machine will be able to do more things which are you know, very useful and the mankind will have to do more added value type of things. But it's not really the man replacing the machine or the machine replacing the man. It's a complementary things that we will have to organize. 
and successful businesses, successful company will be the one that can specialize the machine where the machines can do the right thing and specialize the man on the value added tasks that are bringing better value on better outcome for the customer. And so then if we look at this post pandemic yeah. world, if we continue in the current trend, where's the world going? I, you, know, I, I, you know, I'm not worried about that. The, the current trend, which is, you know, uh, pretty challenging for the planet, I think, frankly. But even if you look at it, you know, with all the negative of it, the worst economic crisis, and yes, people will lose jobs, all of this is true. But the positive view of that is that for the first time ever, we have been able to find a vaccine in less than 12 months. So when you really challenge humanity, sometimes you get positive things, you know, which when we will look at this pandemic, you know, I don't know what we're going to say about it, but certainly we're going to say it was difficult and painful for many people. But the fact that humanity has been able to do something that we have never done before, and after it's a question whether you believe human ingenuity will continue to deliver those kind of extraordinary outcome or not, if you believe so, which is more my view, you know, we're going to have to leverage it because there will be other challenges to face, you know, energy transition, digital, all of this will create a lot of human ingenuity in order to address. As you have navigated your way through this pandemic, and as you've said, it's been a learning process for all of us, what have you learned about yourself? I learned a lot of humility. I think, uh, because when you are dealing with something you don't know, the best thing you can say is to acknowledge that you don't know. I was always thinking that being humble is a, probably a good thing, but I think now it's really a very good thing. And that's something uh, that many leaders struggle with uh, because leadership was very often perceived as I know and I will explain what I know to the rest of the troops. Well, in this case, it was exactly the opposite. You know, it, uh, you have to deal with something you don't know. Certainly having this leadership style of humility, listening, empathy was a bit of the winning formula in my view for that current period. And then in terms of your own values, Jean-Marc Olanier, how have those values changed? You've talked about humility, but pre-pandemic and now as we are, you know, one year into it, how different are you as a person? For me, you know, to be perfectly uh, candid around what's happened, is this period of lockdown, many countries you know have been through lockdown a month or two. For me, it has been like three months. Uh, what changed for me is that I spent really three months with my whole family at home, which I think also has been not a leadership experience, but certainly a family experience that uh, gives you a different perspective. And how has that changed your perspective? My perspective has so changed with me. I know that the family was important, but I think it is really very important. <laughs> and it is really very important because it gives you uh, probably also this uh, kind of human touch and that uh, you can learn from everybody. You can learn from your daughter, you can learn from your employees. And that's certainly something, I don't know if I discover, but I maybe rediscover. And so, as we were saying, part of your job in some respects is trying to foresee and yeah. shape the future. So if you were to give a piece of advice for people who are looking to this future that does seem very uncertain, what would it be? I am an engineer by background, which means that I am curious. And I think curiosity is important because we are in a world of, uh, where a lot of innovation are happening. And if you want to shape that vision, you need to be curious and understand all the things that happen around you. And I have been always passionate around technology, and I have been always passionate around climate, not always, but since now less than a decade, very much passionate. And when you look at the energy sector, climate change, sustainability, there's going to be a lot of innovation there. So if you don't have that curiosity, if you don't have that willingness to learn, well, you may miss some of it. And I think this is also probably uh, what leadership is about. Everything I learned at school is no longer you know, something really relevant. So you have to keep learning and you need to have that curiosity and motivation because uh, otherwise maybe you don't really understand what's going on around you. Be curious, <laughs> keep learning. Many thanks Jean-Marc Golanier for joining us on Disrupted. No, thanks Isabelle, it was a pleasure.